Hey guys, it's Gerard Rommel here from GoPro Tutorials and Films and today we're going to talk about noise. Alright, so the first steps you want to do to understanding noise is what types of noise are there. Now there's Gaussian noise, salt and pepper noise, shot noise, quantization noise, film grain and also anisotropic noise. That was a bit of a tongue twister. Now all these noises are dependent on different variables, like Gaussian noise is your ISO limit, salt and pepper noise is simple issues between you converting from digital to film. But the one that we're most concerned with with GoPros and most common DSLRs is Gaussian noise. And that's because of your ISO. Now ISO is a very, very, very important thing to change within your camera. Now the reason why ISO is so important is if you're shooting in low light, you're going to have to boost your ISO up or your image sensitivity, or the image sensor sensitivity, so you can get more light from that shot, so the shot's even usable. But the problem is, the higher the ISO you go, the more noise comes in and ruins your shot. So there's a certain point where it's bright, then there's a little point where it's in between, so it's a little bit noisy, but the perfect amount of brightness. And then there's this massive point at the very top where the footage is unusable, but it's got the perfect amount of brightness that you want. Now you want to find the point right about here, where it's bright, but it's also got a bit of noise, but you can get rid of that in post-production. And that's what I'm going to show you guys what to do today. Now here's a couple of examples of noise in the first place. So first of all, we've got ISO 400. Now as you see, there's not much noise in the shadows, but the actual shadows themselves are really, really dark. Now once this is done, you can boost up to 800 on the GoPro, and this will give you the option of a little bit more light, in fact, twice as much light. So this twice as much light, you'll see a bit more detail in the shadows, but it's sort of noisy, but you can use it still if you want to. All right. The next setting after that is ISO 1600. Now 1600 is the furthest I'd ever go for GoPro because there's enough light and you can remove the noise with using post-production things like film, uh, film emulation and also simple things like neat video and denoiser too. But it's at the point where you can use the footage but you can also remove the noise. Now after that is 3200. So this is six times more noise than what you'd have as 400 which is a bit of a bummer but you can get around it but this would be the very maximum. This is like desperate, desperate, desperate times here. You're in the deep, dark depths of noise right now and you don't want to go any more on a GoPro. Now, but GoPro have got 6400. Now this stuff is usable. As you can see right now, the footage is just shit. There is so much noise you can't even use it. The shadows are perfect. You can see so much detail, but even adding a denoiser like right now, you still can't use it because it's pointless. So I'd recommend with a GoPro a maximum ISO of 1600 if you're absolutely desperate, 3200. Now first of all, I've got to show you guys how to remove the noise from your shots. So the first thing you guys want to do is open Premiere Pro. Now I'm just going to call mine for now noise and let's press enter. Once that loads, it'll take a while, you want to import some of your shots. So simply go up to file and let's go into import. I'll come up with an array of things you can choose from. I'm just going to choose from noise and let's choose let's choose something pretty bad. I think this is ISO 1600 out here. So once that imports, I'll show you guys what to do after that. So now that my shot's imported, I'll go to project, I'll give, click on this and I'll drag it straight in to, to make a new sequence. So drag it in. Alright, so that means that the shot's there. As you can see over here, the noise is extremely bad. So I'm just going to put that in fit so you can see the entire shot. So yeah, the noise is extremely bad. Once you, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go over to effects and video effects. Now I have denoiser, you can also have neat video and there's also a very expensive one which I forget the name of right now. So red giant denoiser and denoiser. So I just want to drag it straight onto my clip. Now this will take a pretty heavy load onto your computer. So don't mind if my computer is lagging, I'll just skip that out for now. Alright, so once that finally loads, you're going to have to open it up, and it depended on the shot. So as you can see here, you've got all these different things you can play around with, like noise reductions on 100%, motion estimation, separate fields, enhancement, free frame sample, use the GPU, and blah blah, fine tuning, and advanced settings. Now the main one we're going to be considering right now is noise reduction and motion estimation. So I like to zoom in a little bit so I can see my noise a little bit better, because you can't really see it when you're at that far. So let's go to 150 maybe. Uh, so once 150 is load, you'll see that the uh, noise denoise is already taking a little bit of effect. So you can just turn that off and on, and you'll see the difference between the denoises. So I'll just turn that off right now. So you'll, from that, it will go to that. 
So it's a pretty big difference. So having the dealers on already is doing quite a good job. Now I'm gonna have to turn my noise reduction up a little bit more because you can, as you can still see, there's still noise in there. So I'm just gonna go to noise reduction over here. And I'm gonna maybe put this up to maybe 180%. All right, so once that's loaded, you wanna click on motion estimation. That'll give you a little bit better quality and the fine details. So as you can see here now, the noise is taking getting removed away, but it's got this sort of smudgy effect. We'll, we'll work on that when we put it back into Final Cut Pro. And that's about it you only have to do really for your shots. So this most reduction is just dependent on your shot. So you can drag it up or down depending on what. So I think this is 1600, so the noise isn't that bad. But if it's like 6400, which is usable nearly, I add it up to 400%, which is crazy, crazy amount of noise reduction. All right, so once that's done, you want to open Final Cut Pro. You want to go up here and go File, New, and let's go a Project. I'm just going to call this uh, noise example and you just want to drag your clip in that you've re just exported out of Premiere Pro. So mine was 1600 so I'm just going to get this clip right here and drag it straight into Final Cut Pro. Alright, as, as you can see the noise has been removed from this shot so if we play it back there's not much noise in it but it's, it's usable but with a couple of little things in post production you can get a little bit better from it. Alright, first thing you want to do is actually color grade the shot. Now, color grading the shot will distract the people from the actual noise themselves. So, I might use, actually, I'll use color finale for this. So, I'm going to go color finale, drag color finale straight onto it. And this is just all my personal preferences, so I'll just fast forward this section right now. Alright, so now that my clip is edited in uh, color finale, I get a nice color grade onto it. Last thing you want to do is add a grey picture on top of it. Like, as you can see, this grey picture that I've done a tutorial on before, called High Dynamic Range from a Grey Picture, is extremely, extremely, extremely helpful for removing noise, distracting people, and giving a nice look to the GoPro. So, putting this on top of the clip, as you can now see, so let me just drag the clip onto. Putting grey on top of the clip, at first will give you this weird effect, but if you click over here and go Blend Mode, and then go to Difference, It'll give it even weirder effects, but if you go down to 2%, it'll hide the noise in the shadows by putting this grey profile over it. So now you can see that the clip is actually usable because you've colour graded it, and you've removed it, most of it with the grey. Alright, that's all from me guys, from Jared Renner here from GoPro Tools and Films. Hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next amazing tutorial. Peace.